Hello friends, welcome back to Data Center Guru Knowledge Platform Knowing A to Z of Data Center. So I am back with very interesting topic uh, which I got a lot of requests from my industry colleagues stating that please have a session on statutory requirement for data center. So I did a couple of research, spoke to my industry colleagues and tried to consolidated this session and I hope this session would be useful to you. As you know, uh, the data center uh, policy is still under draft and uh, uh, there has been a recommendation also that data center should be classified as different asset class. So maybe once uh, such thing happens, then there can be or there may be uh, a certain reduction in uh, such kind of statutory requirements but uh, in this session I am going to talk about what are the current statutory requirements uh, which is there for the data center. So moving to next is as usual what is this statutory requirement and why do we need this. So statutory requirements are obligations that are imposed on organization by law of land. So these requirements vary from country to country and even state to state, even may vary from district to district also. Uh, so that's the reason the building codes and couple of requirements uh, varies from location to location. However, these statutory obligations are also applicable for design, build and operate of data center. And uh, few regulations, as I said, may vary from state to state or location to location. But uh, in this session, I am going to talk about the broader uh, level of requirement, which is, I would say, more than 95% is applicable everywhere across India. So, these requirements are more about based on policies, regulation and requirements and it is enforced by law. So if you don't comply with it, you may face uh, a different a level of uh, non-compliance uh, IT Act or Penal Code Act. So that is very very necessary to uh, compliance with. Moving to next is what I did is I divided the complete data center into multiple milestone or stages because it uh, makes uh, easier for you to understand what approvals are required at what stage. So uh, you can uh, rebucket all those items and prioritize which approvals are required first and accordingly you can take it forward. So there are five stages which I have uh, defined and the first is a feasibility stage where you are trying to identify land and do the feasibility study of it and then before you start the construction the pre-construction phase or design phase what are the requirements which you have to take care of it then again during construction phase there are certain requirements then once you complete your project once the project completion is done then there are certain uh, compliance requirement which you have to take care of uh, before you get uh, the completion certificate and start using your data center site and the last is operational stage so once your data center is operational after completion so there are certain requirements uh, which you need to take care of on a year-on-year -year basis. So that those compliances you have to maintain uh, based on because different level of compliances are different, different level of validity. So you have to make sure you track those requirements and make sure that you are complying to those. So more now as I uh, talked about phase-wise distribution of this approval. So on this slide, we are going to talk about at the feasibility stage, what are the different aspects or the requirements we should take care of it. So obviously, ownership certificate of the land 
non encumbrance certificate that land is clear from all aspects there is no conflicts then we have to change the use of land approval if your land is uh, not made for the data center purpose like most of the places when you acquire land it is made for uh, some time it is for agricultural use or some other use and if you want to use it for the data center for or some other purpose you need to get the approval from that that is called CLE approval similarly if your uh, site is uh, 20 kilometers within the airport or 36 meter height and more then in that case you need to have aviation clearance similarly if your site is around uh, 300 to 500 meters away from the coastal area Uh, then you need to get uh, the CRZ clearance. So at, at last, uh, the line item what you see here in green, the site due diligence for the data center. Sometimes people also call it site feasibility study. So these things are also very very important. Even if this particular activity is not part of this in the feasibility stage. but it is very very necessary to do this site due diligence or feasibility study of the site to ensure that your site is more conducive to the data center requirements and if there are any associated risk you are able to um, incorporate or try to minimize those risk uh, by incorporating the same in the design and you implement it or even if you are not able to mitigate the risk you know the what is the risk level and then you keep on monitoring the risk across life span of the data center so this site due diligence or site feasibility study is very very important for data center to be taken care of anything if you need from that perspective we do this and we can be able to help you as uh, part of data center moving to next stage is pre construction stage or the design stage before we start the construction what are the different approvals we need to have and there are a lot so layout and building plan approval so you have to uh, take this up, uh, submit the entire building plan master plan and everything uh, structural drawings to uh, the local uh, municipal corporation or development authority uh, they are the approving authority for that and you have to have the approval before you commence similarly uh, before you start the construction uh, there are approval required from uh, those authorities then demarcation or zoning plan approval is required it is more associated with land how and what part how you are joining it so there is a specific approval which is required for that environmental clearance uh, from uh, forest department whether you are cutting a tree or you need noc for sewerage and drainage you also need approval from for road access he uh, this approval is required in terms of what is the impact temporary or permanent by you constructing the data center or post construction of the data center how it is impacting the road so those uh, access plan and all approvals are required internal infra layout plan approval it is more about how internally you are fitting out different equipments uh and the distribution part we have to uh, put it for approval electrical scheme we have to submit to electrical authority for approval we have to get noc for traffic and coordination how does your work or operation of the data center impact the traffic so you have to get uh, it from traffic department or even from municipal corporation or development authority similarly you need to have fire fighting scheme approval if the site is near monument uh, around 300 meter or 500 meter 
near the heritage building then you need to get approval if it is not then it is not required then consent to establish and operate dg set you need to get uh, approval from pollution control board uh, to establish the dg set there and run it similarly you need to have approval from water authority uh, for uh, digging the bore well because the data center needs also a lot of water so and uh, you might have to drill uh, a bore well on the site so you need to get the approval from them so these are um, around uh, i would say around 14 15 approvals which is required during the pre construction stage so moving to construction stage so there are a different level of approval which is required even when you start doing the construction like excavation approval you need to take approval before you uh, dig for the foundation of data center and once you construct your building up to plinth level and there is approval required from authority before you move further from the plinth level then you need to also uh, take a sanction for electrical load similarly uh, you need to take the approval for substation transformer and dg set where we are going to install you need to have uh, the organization must register in the labor department and need to comply with all labor laws applicable on the site very very important part then whenever you are uh, opening the site office you need to get the site office approval stating that you will dismantle the site once your project is over if you are putting any holding then you need to get the approval from the relevant authority or uh, if it is on the main highway then you may have to take the approval from them or from the authority of the municipal authorities similarly if there has been any disapproval on uh, during the pre construction stage which you have submitted the documents layouts and all then uh, you have to again follow up to get the commencement certificate uh, from the authority if there is any disapproval you must get it converted into the commencement certificate then auto dcr is uh, nothing but how are you disposing your uh, Uh, scraps unused materials on the construction site is very very important nowadays and you need to take the approval uh, from the requisite authority local authority so moving to next is uh, the completion stage so once your data center is complete what are the things you must have to restart or to start using your data center so obviously you need to have fire energy final fire energy all compliant tested everything dish approval dish approval is uh, again direct threat of industrial safety and health so that approval you have to get lift installation approval from the inspector that uh, all the lift has been installed safely and is safe to use then permanent water connection you must have permanent uh, power connection you must have permanent sewage connection and then you need to get consent to operation from the pollution control board uh, specifically on the dg set you need to also get approval from ccoe or uh, peso for safety of explosive material because in data center side uh um, the dependency on the captive power is very high and we store huge amount of diesel on the site which is hazardous and explosive and that's the reason this uh approval is required from uh, ccoe nagpur similarly once the entire setup is done there is electrical inspector approval he inspects and approve that the entire electrical installation is done as per the local electricity code or the law and the finally you get the completion certificate from the authority and that gives you a green signal to 
start using your data center. So these are the things which I could able to uh, now on in my next session uh, I will be talking about what are the statutory requirements for operate cycle of the data center because there are a set of statutory requirements and also sets of certain certifications audit uh, requirements so those details uh, I would be sharing in the upcoming session on 13 September because if I would have included this this would have more uh, lengthy and I wanted to have this session within half an hour and that is the reason I split this uh, to the next session. So with this uh, we come to end of this session. I sincerely thank you for watching. In case of any queries, any doubts, any support, any guidance, please reach out to us on email which is mentioned on the slide advisor at datacenterguru.in or you can also visit our website datacenterguru.in there have been a lot of unique services which we are providing around data center life cycle which you will not find in the industry very very because as i told in my first session the data center guru objective is to find innovative solution approach a holistic view to overcome the challenges which data center industry is facing and help them cope up with this growth and maintain the reliability resiliency and in my terms maintain the safest thing across the life cycle so thank you very much a great day great evening great morning shabakar bye bye